Okay, now we're going to start our third video. We're going to talk about how to set up our camshaft. Remember, we've got our number one cylinder exactly at top dead center. We put the transmission in gear so the motor can't turn. That part's done. The lower half of the engine is taken care of. Now we have to work with the camshaft. Something we have to understand is that there's a universal truth. The gears on our cams are always going to have exactly twice as many teeth as the crank gear. Or putting it another way, the crank gear has half as many teeth as the cam gear does. That means that this crank gear has to go around two revolutions to move our cam gear just one. So then, when we're working, okay, this is going to go around, and each time the crank gear goes around once, our pistons are going to cycle. They're going to go up and down once. So to get the cam to go around all the way, this is going to have to go around twice, so our pistons are going to cycle twice. They're going to go up and down, up and down, like that. If we're at top dead center here, we've just finished a stroke. We've either finished our compression stroke or we've finished our exhaust stroke. It's the exhaust stroke that we're interested in today. Now in our video about camshafts, you learned about a thing called valve overlap. What valve overlap tells us is that when the piston is all the way to top dead center at the end of your exhaust stroke, the intake valve and the exhaust valve are actually open for the same time for a very brief little bit and only a little bit, but they are in fact open together. That's important to us. Now I went and I took a look in the warehouse, I grabbed a hold of a, uh, of a cam shaft and looked at the specifications for it, and the specifications for that cam told me that that cam opens up, or excuse me, closes her exhaust valve at 21 degrees after top dead center. So you can imagine that the piston is at top dead center, she's had her explosion, the piston's coming down, the crankshaft comes swinging around, and somewhere down here the exhaust valve begins to open, she's going to stay open all the way up in here, and up around this point she's going to begin to close, and by the time we get to 21 degrees after top dead center, the exhaust valve is closed. The same set of specifications tell us that the intake valve opens at 16 degrees before top dead center. So you imagine the exhaust is going on, the piston's coming up, she's pushing out that spent air fuel mix, she's coming up here, my exhaust valve is closing, and my intake valve is just opening. Okay? So the exhaust valve is closing and the intake valve are opening at the exact same time. Well, so what? Well, think about it. If we can imagine a tall building, at the top of the building there's an elevator, at the very bottom of the building there's another elevator. The elevator at the top wants to go down to the bottom, the one at the bottom wants to go up to the top. If they leave at the exact same time and travel the exact same speed, they're going to cross paths, well that's a given, but where? They'll cross paths exactly in the middle. Okay. Now talking about our valves, if this valve is opening, the intake valve is opening, coming up here, and the exhaust valve is closing, there's going to be a point where they're going to have the same amount of opening. They're going to cross paths. Where is that going to be? That's going to be at top dead center. What I'm going to ask you to do now is take a look. What I've got here is a rocker assembly. This is a 451-460. This is a roller rocker assembly for an MGB. I'm um, looking at it from the right side of the engine, which means that this is the front, this is the number one cylinder, the fan is here and the radiator is here, and this is our intake and our exhaust valves. And I'm going to show you what's going to happen here. Imagine that we've just had our explosion, the number one cylinder, the piston is coming down, the, rot the crankshaft is rotating around, and as she comes around, down around here, let's get rid of the intake for a second, as she comes around down someplace around here, the exhaust valve is going to open. She's going to start pushing down, and as she does, she'll open the valve. And coming up all the way along up here, the exhaust valve is going to be held open by this rocker until someplace up there, when the rocker is gradually going to start to come up again. And by the time we get to 21 past top dead center, she'll be closed. While that's going on, the intake valve, during the explosion, has just been sitting here and watching what's been going on. She watched the exhaust valve open down here and did absolutely nothing. Up around here, just about the time the exhaust valve is beginning to close, the intake valve is going to begin to open. So that's why, as one is closing and one is opening, we have overlap. So let's put them together and see what happens. Okay? There's the explosion. The piston comes down. When it's time for the exhaust to start to go out, the exhaust valve is going to open. She's going to push down like that. She'll stay there for most of the way until we start toward top dead center again. And as we creep up on top dead center, she's going to start to come up and close herself. At about that time, the intake valve is going to start to open herself. And these two are going to cross right about in the middle. To illustrate it, I'm going to put the straight edge on here and let's see if we can see what happens. Imagine they're sitting there, they're equal. Okay, now as the exhaust valve opens, we can see that this is obviously crooked. It's out of balance and not the same height. And that's perfectly fine. 
When the exhaust valve begins to come back up again, the intake valve is going to start to go down. That's the overlap. And right there, where they both meet, that's the exact point. When that happens, this motor is a top dead center. So what I need to do is, now that I know what this is, I've got my piston at top dead center. I'm going to take my camshaft and I'm going to turn the gear until I reach the point that we just talked about. Where the exhaust valve is coming up, the intake valve is coming down, and they are the same, and that's top dead center. Okay, now somebody might look at what we've talked about and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, I have an objection. This doesn't make sense to me. Something's wrong here. And we'll say, well, what is that? And he'll say, in your illustration, you had a building, and you said that somebody started from the top and somebody started from the bottom, and they left at the same time, and they left at the, you know, with the same speed, and right about in the middle they meet. Well, that's true. But look what you've got here. You've got 16 degrees before top dead center for one and 21 degrees after top dead center for the other. If they were the same, what you just said would work, but they're not. Well, that's true. But let's see why we don't have to worry ourselves about that. Let's take a look at this cam gear. This cam gear has 40 teeth. That means, because it's 360 degrees all the way around, that each tooth represents 9 degrees. Over here, there's 20 teeth, each tooth represents 18 degrees. So let's keep that 9 degrees and 18 degrees in mind for just a moment. Now, we learned earlier in our video about the crankshafts that we can take the distance before and after and add them together to try to figure out where the difference is, where the middle is. Okay, if we have 16 degrees before and 21 degrees after, we come up with 37 degrees. If we take 37 degrees and we fold it in half, as we did in our other video, and we have both sides to get the middle, the middle is going to be, or take 37 and cut it in half, is 18 and one half degrees. Now, what does that do? Well, if we started at 16 degrees before top dead center, and we crank down all the way and keep going and count 18 and a half degrees total, it's going to take us right about there, two and a half degrees after top dead center. Okay? If we start at 21 degrees and count backwards 18 and a half degrees, we get two and a half degrees after top dead center. So the fellow who raised the objection is absolutely right. If these aren't exactly the same, this will not come out on top dead center. But notice something. We're off by two and a half degrees. So I've put little marks on these two gears here. And let's imagine that instead of being perfectly aligned, they're off by about that much, about two and a half degrees. Now, you can take a look at it. Remember, we have nine degrees from one tooth to the next. Two and a half degrees is less than one third that distance. So by looking down, you can say, okay, it's not perfect, but I can see where it has to go because it's closest to that one. When I put them like that, then it's perfectly lined up. So now, are we done? Almost. We have one more thing we need to do. Remember, the crankshaft is at top dead center. So you can go ahead and make a permanent mark of some sort right here so you know where that is. Your camshaft, on the other hand, is in fact 180 degrees out because we have set this up so this is at the end of the exhaust stroke. And they are usually set up when they're at the end of the compression stroke. So what are we going to do? Well, you can go ahead and make a mark exactly on the other side of where this is. So just find the spot exactly across, make your permanent mark there, rotate your camshaft around by hand, okay, and when you are there and you're at that mark and it's lined up with, with the pin that you've already made your mark for there, now you have your two marks. This engine is now timed. You can go ahead and bolt these down with the chain on them like you have to, drop your distributor into the number one position, and this engine is ready to go. So we've learned today how we can take an engine where the cam or the crank or both have been moved and we don't know where they go and working with a set of gears and we don't know where the marks are and make our own marks and get this to be perfectly aligned. Thank you.